Okie dokie, well, good morning everybody, and time once again for my pseudo cast. And, um, before I get too into this, uh, let me crack open a can of V8 Energy Beach Mango flavor. So, get ready for some pops. Okay, but anyway, for the music, um... For no other reason than the fact that it was just the first thing that came up on my uh, YouTube list. It's Moss Witch, Mystic Bloodsport. Um, I've never heard this one before, so there's going to be that chance that I might end up having to switch it out here if it gets too offensive, for lack of a better word. Oh my god, this is gonna be that that really bad chip tune music. But uh, I am gonna have to turn it up a bit on my end though, because I can hardly hear it. Turn it back down a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm still sound testing this, by the way. Okay. Alright. I'll just say close enough on that. Uh, but otherwise, I didn't really do a whole lot last night. Um, but I did, and I did call in last night. This is, uh, this is, uh, basically day two of my self-quarantine, and, um, I did, and I did read a, I read a newspaper article or two, but my neck of the woods, uh, Minnesota, is actually, uh, considered the, oh, what was it? It was considered high, it was, um, uh, oh, what's the damn word I'm looking for? Oh, um, it's considered to have a, a high transmission rate. Like, there's been a pretty there's been a pretty big upswing of the Delta COVID virus in this state. Um, and I looked it up. I actually looked up uh, the, where I live. Uh, right where I live. That's um. Oh God, what, I think it was like 150 cases just in just in my neck of the woods in the past week. So yeah, this. Doing this might have actually been a good call on my part, even though I wasn't aware of it at the time. But yeah, here, let me let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, because it is. Okay, here. Yeah, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that even fully vaccinated people wear masks in areas with higher substantial levels of viral transmission, which, for those that didn't catch my uh, cast yesterday, um, I, uh, I think it was, I think it was Wednesday morning, I ate at Applebee's, and, like, shortly before the lunch rush, and nobody in this building was wearing masks. So, and I said this yesterday, too, I'll say it here, I don't, I don't know who, I don't know who in that room wasn't vaccinated or I don't know who who I came across was uh was unvaccinated or even worse was one of them anti-vaxxers you know those that say that vaccines are evil or those vaccines are unreliable I've 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 heard of people dying from vaccines you know which which uh which all real in all reality he probably got you probably found a story of like one single person, one single isolated incident, who died from a bad, who died from a vaccine, but you know that kind of thing. You know, it just or that that's what I was try, that's what I was trying to say. The or trying to take away our freedom type people. You know where where you know you have you know you tell you you're telling them to wear their mask and they things are being fucked with. Although I do have to say, to be fair. To be fair, I was one of those people. I mean, because I mean, at my job, Walmart, we have to wear we have to wear them. 
I mean, it, it's it's basically part of our dress code now. But um, but at one point, like the moment I the moment I clocked out and went home, once I got out of that building, that sucker came right off. Uh, but these days, after the stuff I've read about, you know, about Delta COVID and about oh something like oh, I I think I remember seeing this somewhere, but uh oh it, that's what it was, especially when the uh, virus first came out. It was possible to transmit the virus to other people without having any symptoms at all. I think that I think I remember seeing that or and or reading that somewhere. You could you could be a disease carrier and not have any of the symptoms. So yeah, but I mean these I mean these days, yeah, I yeah, I, I'm going out amongst a bunch of people. Yeah, I'm wearing that mask. I'm fully vaccinated, but I'm wearing that mask anyway. But again, um, Wednesday morning was probably the probably the rare exception. Uh, one of those reasons why was because uh, my mom and my sister, you know, invited me to have lunch with them. And it just, I haven't seen them in a very long time, so I figured it would have been bad for them to get into an argument about the COVID virus. You know, and how, you know, your vaccines are now, are now only partially effective. So, but, you know, I mean, not, you know, arguing about this kind of thing really isn't the kind of thing I'd want to do to relatives that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. So. So, yeah, but, um. But, yeah, I'm still, I'm still, re I'm still looking at this news article, though. Oh, that's going to be bad. Masks and vaccinations will not be required at the Minnesota State Fair this summer, but both are encouraged. I would hope so. Man, that's going to be a whole lot of people in, in one crowd, in one area that's not going to be wearing their masks again. I mean, my incident that I went through at Applebee's is going to be a drop in the bucket compared to what's going to be going on at the Minnesota State Fair. I'm, 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 I'm still reading this. <coughs> okay. Uh... Oh, and they're also talking about uh, people getting booster shots every eight months. Okay, but yeah, I, I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say on this article, so. Um, but yeah, like I said, according to this article that I read, um, there was another one. Wait a minute, wait, I still have the, I think the tab's still up. Yeah, in the, where, I, in, right in my neck of the woods, just last week alone, there was 141 cases. And, um, and a total amount of cases, I don't know how far back this goes. From June 6th to August 8th, there was uh, 12,399 cases. Again, just in my county, just in the in the neck of, in my neck of the woods. So yeah, and again, um, 100 yeah, 141 cases last week. So. But yeah, well, it looks like uh, the self-quarantine was a good call on my part. And apparently there seems to be another issue that uh, a lot of people around my, my neck of the woods are having too. Fruit flies. 
I had a, I had a, I actually had to go out. I think I left around 6.30 p.m. last night because uh, I was running low on, um, I don't, it, it, I, it's called, I call it, I just call it fruit fly juice, but, um, they're, uh, you can, they're called, uh, the brand is called Taro, Taro fruit fly traps, whereas I don't really use the traps that come with them. What I use instead is just the juice that comes with it. You're supposed to, you're supposed to squirt a whole bunch of this liquid at the bottom of this trap and then just set it down wherever there's lots of fruit flies and they'll, they'll fly in there and the, the, the liquid is actually poisonous. But um, what I do instead, and um, I think I saw this on a YouTube video uh, like probably like a year ago, but what this girl used is their, uh, their fly traps. They're not, they're not fly strips. I wish I knew the actual name of them, but uh, they're uh, they're these uh, they're these silver glue trap cylinders. You like, you know, you you hang them up on you hang them up on something. But uh, but the way these ones work is there's like a there's a little kind of a bottom little reservoir, little reservoir at the bottom of these uh, cylinder traps. I'll squirt a I'll squirt a bunch of liquid. At the bottom of this, and that actually that actually works better. That actually works better than the damn the actual fruit fly traps that you that you get. Cause uh, it seems that uh, these fruit flies they don't they don't fly straight straight into the liquid. They don't like land straight on it or anything like that. They usually like to land somewhere else first before uh, going in. But uh, they can, uh, they they can smell it though. I guess they uh, they're they have a super strong sense of smell due to due to their antenna, and um, they hate the smell of lavender. So I bought some uh, it's a uh, Glade lavender. I don't think the name of the I don't think the term is potpourri, but um. But I'll, I'll just call it uh, I'll just call it lavender, lavender aerosol. But uh, I'll spray. I've started spraying this in like the garbage cans and stuff after I throw my uh, food away, or after I throw my uh, my my used plates and bowls away. So. But yeah, I I went over to Walmart to try to get more of them. They were completely empty. All things fruit fly related, gone. So apparently I'm not the only one that's having this problem. Uh, so I went, I hopped on over to Home Depot. And lo and behold, uh, those guys, those guys must really know what the hell they're doing over there because that place is very all things uh, fruit fly related was well stocked. I mean they even had a, they even had two packs of these uh, glue traps. So I bought me bought me one of them, um, and the the taro. Fruit fly traps. I bought me a couple of them, but uh, I think I only used maybe one, one of the red traps just, just to see how well it works. I haven't caught a fruit fly yet. But um, uh, but yeah, I, I bought me some. But uh, I just used the liquid out of them, and again, I squirt them into these uh at the bottom of these uh cylinder glue traps. But yeah, I've already uh, I've already caught a few of them. Didn't even lay it down. Maybe maybe over overnight, and I've already caught I caught roughly ten to fifteen of them. So it's actually pretty effective. But um, and but for those that, for those that thinking I'm a total and 100 for those that are, that are thinking I'm a total 100% complete slob, um, no, you're only maybe I'd probably say 35 to 40 percent right. Um, I'm not the I'm not the cleanest guy in the world. But um, I mean I'll you know I'll scrub my counter you know I'll wipe down my counters every so often you know that kind of thing but um. I'm in a, my biggest mistake 
came from a... You could call it a good thing or a bad thing, depending on point of view, but uh, um, I'm kind of averse to taking the garbage out, especially considering that I live on the third floor of my apartment complex. That's a super long walk from here all the way down to the dumpster, and you know, so I'm not a fan of taking out the garbage every single day, so what I got instead are these two huge garbage cans. So I take the garbage out maybe once once every month, once every other month. But the problem with this is, is uh, and this is a lesson I learned the hard way, it's, and it's also why I'll never be completely rid of the fruit fly problem, is um, I'll, I'll keep throwing away like, uh, or the big culprit, the big culprit is banana peels. I eat, you know, I eat bananas, and um, it, it got to where I'll throw my banana peels in the garbage, and over time, all these banana peels are building up, and then one day, I just, one day I just uh, walk in, look at my kitchen, and I'll see, I just see like just, just big old haze of like fruit flies above my garbage can, just. You know, so, I mean, I took the garbage out immediately, but I came to the realization that the reason why I have so many fruit flies was because of, uh, was because of all the banana peels I had building up in my garbage. So yeah, so now, now what I do with my banana peels is I'll throw, I'll throw them in a plastic bag in the freezer, and then when that bag gets filled up, the next time I bring the garbage out, and if I remember to, I'll throw that bag of banana peels in there with it. So, and then um, but yeah, like, but like I said, because of that, I'll never be completely rid of the fruit fly problem. You know, you know, I'm all I'm always seeing like an occasional one, an occasional two flying around here and there, even on a even during the winter. You know, when it's you know when it's cold out and they're they're supposed to be not at all. I'll still get like one or two flying around, but that's that's why. Um, I also have the same problem with weevils. Um, several years ago, I think I want to say it was. It was when I first started up. Uh, it was when I first took my computer tower, my new computer, and brought it out here to my living room. And just do all my gaming out of my living room. But uh, it was also around this when I started doing that. Um, I began having problems with uh, with it, you know, being during the summer months. My hand, my uh, my uh, my mouse hand, my right hand will get all sweaty and sticky. And those that have watched me stream have probably seen me do this. Like if I'm streaming pinball, I'll often have to take my fan and set it on the floor where my hands are holding the controller. Like if I'm streaming pinball, like I said, um, I'll oftentimes have to have my fan down there as well to help keep my hands cool and dry. So yeah, I still have that problem to this day. But anyway, um, before I before I uh, I thought to start using a fan to for my hands, um, I bought a bag of flour. I bought a bag of flour thinking, you know, just, you know, just pat my fingertips on this, thinking it might cure the problem. And then, um, after testing that and realizing, nope, didn't work, I just went ahead and I just put my bag of flour up in the cupboard somewhere. Like, there, there's a big old hole torn out of it and stuff like that. Oh, a big old, a big, big, yeah. Yeah, there was a big rip, a big tear on the top of the bag where I was, uh, where I was, uh, sticking my fingertips. So, left the bag, left the bag of flour sitting up there for well over a year. Um, I began to notice one day, just seeing like um, I didn't know there were weevils at the time. I just thought they were like ants. Like okay, <coughs> kill them. And it just started up. Uh, I started seeing more and more of them. And then I just like what the hell? I opened the cupboard. The whole freaking cover, the whole freaking uh, cupboard where the flower is, is just covered in weevils, just crawling all over the place. Ah! So I'm like here sitting here trying to throw the flower away, and I'm sitting here, you know, trying to kill as many as I can. I, I think I, um, I try to get a hold of some bug spray or something, just trying to do that. And so, so, so basically, fast forwarding, forwarding to today, um, I still see a weevil here and there that I gotta kill. It's a problem that I'm not gonna completely get rid of now. So. But yeah, that. But yeah, those are some uh, lessons learned right there. 
God help me, Bob. God help me if I ever had any roaches in here. I wonder if that can actually be a lease violation, too. Like if you have a roach infestation. I definitely would have to call an exterminator up here. In fact, I... I think I did just that, too. Um... Right, right around this time when, uh, again, I didn't know that they were weevils at the time. I thought they were just ants. I never thought ants liked flour. I always thought they liked dead stuff. You know, inorganic stuff. And not, not flour. But, so I, I think I, um, I think I talked to the landlady. Either the landlady, or I talked, I think I talked directly to the maintenance person. I didn't dare mention it to the landlady because I don't want to get my ass shoot. I'll dare you run a pigsty, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I just, but yeah, the maintenance guy came up. He just laid out a couple of traps underneath my sink. All right, see ya. So. Oh, damn, that's it. Um, so let me, uh. Oh, well, yeah, that's the end of the. Here, let me, uh, I'm trying to look for one that uh, I haven't found yet, or haven't played yet. Uh, um, I think I've played this one before. This one's called Onward, Lice, Sprock, or Wind. But, again, I didn't, I didn't know it was uh, that short of an album. So, whoops. Okay, but, but anyway, um, and, uh, that was one hell of a redirect, too. I wasn't expecting to talk about, uh, talk about my fruit flies and my, uh, my pest problem or anything like that, so. That was, that was completely ad-lib, by the way. So, but, um, I, one thing I, one other thing I do remember is, uh, I do remember me playing a lot of, uh, Bloons Tower Defense 6. It's a game that I started streaming recently. Well, I've been starting to play it a lot, like, like, over. Well, like uh, last night, this morning, at various times. So, it's, it seems I'm really into this game right now. But, um, I can't remember specific games that are out the top of my head, but this is this seems to be another one. Um, this is kind of like fighting games. That's, that's what I was thinking. I haven't played a fighting game in 30 years, so yeah, there was a period of time where I was really, really, really into fighting games. Just because I haven't played them in 30 years, so a lot of catching up to do. Bloons Tower Defense 6, same thing. Um, I played it a few years ago, but um, I just because of basically money constraints, I just lost interest and stopped playing it. Oh, that and, uh, that and co-op. Co-op mode is a, basically a big-time lag fest. So I think that was it, too, and uh, it's also one of the few games I can think of where I actually enjoy playing uh, playing multiplayer. Most games, uh, especially fighting games, it's it's often a dreadful acti activity, especially when you factor in the lag. But uh, oftentimes in fighting games, with rare exception, I'm usually pitted against somebody who's been playing playing fighting games ever since the 90s, that kind of thing. You know, I haven't played in 30 years. My opponent has been playing for 30 years, so. You know, a lopsided, one-sided mismatch right there. So that makes it very much not fun. You should learn. You should always play against people better than you. You'll learn more. The only thing I learned is uh, how to get my ass kicked. That's it. So, but anyway, I'm going back to what I was saying. Bloons Tower Defense was one of the was one of those games that I hadn't played in a few years. But this time around, I had just discovered that there is a double cash perk. It's a, I think it's a premium upgrade. I think I paid like 20, 30 bucks for it, but to me, it's well worth it. But because of the, because of um, getting double cash from all the balloons I pop, it just, it makes things a hell of a lot easier for me. You know, I can actually experiment more. I can actually play more. I can actually try more stuff out. You know, and and yeah, to to be fair, I mean this game also has a sandbox mode. Like if you complete, if you if you beat a map, like, I think it's, depending on the, depending on which mode, like, if you play a map on easy mode, you'll get, beating it once, 
get you sandbox mode. Um, beating it on medium, you have to beat it twice in order to get sandbox, that kind of thing. But uh, even with, I've done sandbox mode before, but it, it's it's one of those. It's not that much fun. The only thing I probably use it for would be to, would be a little bit of experimenting, and that's it. But it's I gotta do a normal playthrough if I wanted to experiment on something. So that's it. It's also another thing about this game I like. It's one of those where I get when fighting games. I'm a huge fiend for training mode. I'm almost, I'm using it like constantly, trying what works and what doesn't. But B BDD six, it it's one of those where I'm not a fan of it at all. I have to do an actual run. Like no, I mean, I find you know I'm I find sandboxing not much fun at all. It's one of the it's one of the rare ones. Okay, so it otherwise it looks like I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say this morning. But like I said, aside from uh, me talking about me talking about my uh, my bug problem, I didn't really have much else going on. So so I'll just go ahead and uh, cut it off here. Um, but uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and um, most likely I'll probably uh. Calling in tonight as well, day three of my uh, self quarantine. So, which means I should be doing another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, thanks again for coming, everybody, and see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>